All right, hi everyone. So today we're going to take a look at examples of for loops, all right, in the context of arrays and things like that. For further information, you can go to the, the chapter 5 uh, and chapter 15 of the Java 8 Fundamentals book. There's some information, really good information about arrays and uh, loops in there. All right, so let's take a look at an exercise, an example right here for a for loop. So given an array of, of that we'll call numbers of integers. So we have an array, it's called numbers, it's got a bunch of integers or whole numbers in it. How do you print the average of the numbers in that array? So we've got this array and it's got the values 1, 2, 6, and 8, and we want it to print out the average of that, which is 4.25. So how do we do it? Well, we start off with uh, an integer variable called sum, and we set it to 0. We initialize it to 0, and that's important to you know just get things started off right. Next, we have a for loop. So we have 4, and then after that, in the middle of the for loop, we have, or the, the middle of that, that line right there for the for loop, we have three parts. We have the initialization and s the setting up of the counter variable, i. We set it to 0. Then we have a semicolon, and then in between the two semicolons, we have the condition in which the for loop will continue to cycle. And that is when the counter variable, i, is less than the length of, of the array called numbers. You can see the array's name is right here, and uh, and we're assuming that it's been defined ahead of time. Okay, it's been set up. The, the array called numbers has been set up before this loop is started up. And we put a dot here, and we say we want the length of it. So Java will interpret this as a, as a command, basically, to say, I want the length of the array called numbers. And so we'll, we'll continue this loop over and over until we get to the, the number of iterations that equal the length of the number at which point we'll exit. And then right here we have i++, or we could write this as i is equal to i plus 1, which is the condition in which we uh, update the counter variable every cycle through the for loop. Now inside of our for loop, and the for loop itself is defined by the two curly braces there and there, we have a sum is equal to the previous sum, okay, plus the, the, the value of the array at a value, or at an index of 1. So basically what we're doing is we're incrementing the summation over time, or over each cycle, and we, we increment the, or we, we update the value of sum based on what is the contents of the array. Then we, uh, then from there what we do is we say we want an average value, and that average value is going to generally be a floating point number. So we're making it a double precision floating point number, so a 64-bit floating point number called average, and average is basically the integer sum that has been casted, that is, it has been, conver it'll be converted temporarily in the context of this equation right here. It'll be uh, converted into a double precision floating point number, and that will be um, dividing, uh, or it'll be divided by the, the, the value of, um, of the, the length of, of the array. And this way we can get the number of, well, the, the average number of what was in the array. Then from there we print it out. So we system dot out dot print line averages and this is the string and then we concatenate using the plus right here. We concatenate uh, to get the the uh, the average value popped in there as well. Now the issue that you'll encounter is what happens if the array is empty. So for instance, what happens if we go like this? We go uh, int numbers is equal to that. So it's an empty array, okay? And so if we ask for the length, we say numbers dot length, like that, then, well, it's got a length of zero, but the problem is that we're gonna divide by a zero, and dividing by a zero is a no-no, we don't, we don't wanna do that. So the way to deal with something like this is to have an if statement, okay? And so we would set up something like, before we get into this for loop, we would have something like this. We'd say if, and we would say um, numbers.length is not, oops, is not equal to zero, like that. And then, and then we would have some uh, set of commands in here to do the, the for loop. We would do the for loop or something like that, okay? In this case, I'm just going to do a system dot out dot print line just to show it actually working here. So if it's not equal to zero, uh, this is valid. Let's for loop. All right, and then we would actually have a for loop after that. So if 
the length is not equal to zero, then we would implement that. Now, the problem is that uh, right now the length is zero, so basically it won't do anything. But if I were to do uh, numbers, I'll do it again. Numbers is equal to one, two, three, or four, whatever, four. We'll do four like that. Okay, we go like that, and then we do that if statement again. That's the sort of logic that we want to put in to avoid the divide by zero problem. All right, next up. So division by zero, no good. We've got to fix that. Next. Next exercise. Given an array numbers, we've defined an array called numbers of integers. How would you print its contents backwards? Okay. So given an array 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the contents, print 4, 3, 2, 1. That's what we want to be able to do. So here's an example of a for loop where we can do that with decrementing. So what we have is the for loop. We have the keyword for. We set up int i is equal to numbers.length minus 1. So we're going to ask Java for the length of, of the array called numbers, and then we'll subtract 1 from it. And then we're going to say the, the condition for continuing of the loop. We say i is greater than or equal to 0. So we want to get anything that's above 0 and then up to 0. That allows the loop to happen. Instead of i++, plus plus, we do i minus minus, which is the equivalent of saying i is equal to i minus 1. Okay? And then we do the, the print like this right here. Okay? And uh, and so this would work to, to print it out. So um, we uh, we could also change the indexing to go the, the other way around. Okay? So let's, how about we try that out? Let's, let's see it actually working here. All right, so we got, um, let's see, we got int numbers is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. All right, and then we're going to do for loop. We're going to go for int i is equal to numbers dot length minus 1, i greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus, or i is equal to i minus 1, like that. It's the same thing. All right, and then we do system dot out dot print line numbers, and we have the index right here. So we use the square brackets for doing that, and then we do a, a parenthesis to close off this the, the print. Then we go like that, and it should do four three two one. Okay. Now, if we didn't want to have it um, all on different lines, how would we go about doing that? We would do print like that and then we could do something along uh, let's see if we do this there ah anyway I have to figure out how to do how to not have that extra comma right there but basically you could do something along those lines okay so print instead of print line and then you concatenate on a, a comma like that all right next up exercise number five so given an array names of strings, how do you print its content separated by commas and ending with a period? Okay, so hopefully we can solve the issue that I just had right there. So given an array, Alan, Tom, and, uh, Alan, Mark, and Tom, and actually those those uh, quotation marks aren't right. They should be the straight quotation mar marks, not the, uh, the, the fancy ones. Um, then we want to print uh, names, Alan, Mark, and Tom like that. Here. So how do we do that? We go system.out dot print, not print line, print, we say names, colon, like that. And then what we do is we have a for loop, and we start at zero, with i is equal to zero, i is less than the length of the names array, and then i plus plus, or i is equal to i plus one. Then we say system dot out dot print, and we say names, and then i like that. And then, if i is less than names dot length minus one, add in the comma. So this means that it will only print out the comma if it's not the last value in the array that's being printed out to the screen. So this is a fix right here. All right. And then we say system dot out dot print line. So that's going to have a new line at the end of it. And we put a period. So it'll do a period and then a new line. And so everything will be on the same line. And there you go. So three examples of for loops with a little bit of uh, intervention with uh, Java shell or J shell in there uh, to intersperse all that.
All right, good luck, everyone.